carved into the great mountain range of Kazmodan lies the dwarven city of Ironforge. It stands as a testament to dwarven ingenuity, a subterranean fortress capital that beneath snow-swept peaks roars with the fires of industry and the boasts of drunken frivolity. With the formation of the Grand Alliance, dwarves of every clan can be found tending to the hearths of its shops and inns, or working tirelessly as smiths in the Great Forge. Gnomish refugees and human travelers, even the elves, Draenei, Worgen, and Pandaren, can sometimes be found wandering its streets, but there can be no mistaking that Ironforge is a dwarven city. And here, one dwarf clan stands as the first among equals, Clan Bronzebeard. It was under the leadership of Agrim Bronzebeard that the clan first rose to a place of prominence and earned the respect of its partners and rivals. For many long centuries, Clan Bronzebeard and the other dwarves of Kazmodan lived in peace with one another, sworn to the authority of the High King Modimus Anvilmar. The Bronzebeard clan enjoyed close ties to the High King, becoming the great defenders of Ironforge. With Anvilmar's death, however, building resentments between Clan Bronzebeard and the other two largest clans of Ironforge, Wildhammer and Dark Iron, spiraled into civil war. For many years, this war raged under the earth and threatened the very foundations of Ironforge. Eventually, Clan Bronzebeard, which had always maintained the largest standing army, overwhelmed Wildhammer and Dark Iron banishing their survivors into the surrounding wilderness of Kazmodan. While Clan Bronzebeard would secure the respect and eventually the friendship of the Wildhammer Dwarves, the Dark Iron Clan vowed revenge and turned to sorcery and ancient powers. The last great conflict of the era, known as the War of the Three Hammers, ended with the defeat of the Dark Iron Clan and the devastation of their lands at the hands of an elemental they had dared summon out of desperation. The ruin of Dark Iron further cemented the preeminence of the Bronzebeard clan. Their kings ruled over Ironforge and Kazmodan unchallenged, gaining new allies in the humans of Stormwind, and through them, a partnership with the High Elves of Silvermoon. Ironforge was restored to its former glory, and a mighty bridge, one of the greatest engineering projects of the Dwarves, built across the Thandol Valley. During the first great war against the Orcish Horde, King Magni Bronzebeard endured years of bloody sieges and ensured the gates of Ironforge were never breached. Bronzebeard cannons, demolition experts, and skilled blacksmiths became integral parts of the war effort ensuring Clan Bronzebeard, and by extension all Ironforge, would forever be a leading member of the growing alliance. While victory was secured, Clan Bronzebeard suffered repeated tragedies in the uneasy peace that followed. King Magni would be cursed and petrified, his brother, Moradin, presumed dead, and the rule of Moira Bronzebeard would lead Ironforge into tyranny and ruin. The unexpected return of Moradin has brought prestige back to Bronzebeard, which today is represented in the Council of the Three Hammers. This regency rules the Kingdom of Ironforge in the absence of the High King and ensures the Bronzebeard clan a place of authority and respect. While the High Seat of Ironforge remains empty and Moradin Bronzebeard carries the title of High Thane rather than High King, the clan remains a powerful force both in Ironforge and across Azeroth. It endures like the capital itself, with the hammer of industry, toast to song and story, and for all the raging of its enemies, never broken. The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.